Previously on AgentPalmer.com, five quotes from the start of the High Druid of Shannara trilogy. Man in the Arena builds new autobiographical medium as it celebrates Tom Brady. And did I learn that I could be over-caffeinated during these episodes? Probably not. This is The Palmer Files, episode 65, with Jason Collins, who is not only more charismatic than Nick Burns, your company's computer guy, but he's a friend I've reconnected with. We discuss being a rhythm section of Jason's, college, IT, finding your space, friendship renewed, file organization, and much, much more. Are you ready? Let's do the show! Welcome to the Palmer Files. I'm your host, Jason Stershik, also known as Agent Palmer, and on this 65th episode is Jason Collins. As you'll hear, Jason and I are friends from college. That's where we met, and shortly after that time is where we parted ways, but we have reconnected, which is why you could say this episode is just two skinny kids named Jason talking about the days gone by, the days in between, and coming back together after not talking for a long time. We also discuss the nature of friendship, our careers in information technologies, hobbies, video games, digital organization, and reminisce about old technologies. Caution, this may get technically geeky, the best kind of geeky, but you will learn about technology and where we've come from. Anyway, all of that and much, much more is headed your way shortly. But first, remember, if you want to discuss this episode as you listen or afterwards, you could tweet me at Agent Palmer, my guest Jason Collins at It's Uriel, that's I-T-S-U-R-I-Y-E-L, and this show at The Palmer Files. Don't forget, you can see all of my writings and rantings on agentpalmer.com, and of course, email can be sent to thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. So without further ado, one, two. Jason, you and I were a rhythm section together a long time ago. Yep. Yep. You, you were the second and dare I say better Jason I played drums with. <laughs> Are you referring to <laughs> somebody who used to beat the heads of the drums way too hard? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> wore a lot of black. Yep. A lo- lot yeah. of black. Yep. I know. Uh, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's good, I guess. I mean, thanks thanks for the compliment. You still, you still playing? <laughs> no. Do you, Not yet. Do you, do you, so back then, I, I was just a skinny kid with long hair playing bass, and you were just a skinny kid with long hair playing drums. Yeah. That was it. That was it. What do I look back and have can say with honesty, I had no idea what I was going to do going forward. Did, did you? I mean, you were, because I was one of those wayfaring communications liberal arts majors you were actually you had a major that was real like you you were an it major right yeah not at first though i went <clears throat> i didn't know what i was doing either coming out of high school and everybody's like oh you really like art you're really good at art you should go for art and i was like okay i'll go for art and then i got into art and i hated it because <laughs> it was not the, it, the program wasn't tuned for me they were trying to tune me to the program that's the consensus yeah yeah and I, I mean, if you're into fine arts and you want to paint and you want to hobnob snobs at the, the galleries and <laughs> you know what I mean? Brown nose and suck up to people to try and sell ridiculous works of art for outrageous amounts of money. That's not my gig. And I was like, wow, I'm not going to make any money in that realm. So I switched. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, I finished the degree because I was so far along. And then I transferred as many credits as possible over to the science major where I was like, well, I like computers, too. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, there's good there's good jobs out there for IT. There's good jobs out there for IT. So I was like, all right, I'll do that. So was it that simple? Like, I like art. I'm going to major in art. And then I, I like I, I like computers. I'm going to because like to me, I wish I had had the foresight to be like, I like computers. I should I should major in IT. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got the foresight once I was off on my own. Uh, prior to that, I was taking everyone else's advice. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And and I'm surprised like my my school teachers weren't more um, 
helpful in that respect and say, well, you know, in terms of your grades and stuff, you should go for like a computer science degree. Nobody ever said that. They would always just ask you, well, what do you think you're going to do? And I say, I'm going to do art. And they say, oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> well, Knowing me better than I knew myself at the time, they probably should have said, look, <laughs> you, you can probably get like some scholarships if you did this. or you, So like it is what it is. I mean, I will say we were the I look back at us as being the last generation that was told you finish high school, you'd go to college with. Yeah, and, and because I, I think I, I mean, I grew up with that expectation. Like no one told me what to go to college for. They just said, this is what you do after high school. Yeah. Like, in other words, you weren't going to go anywhere in life if you didn't have a degree. That's yeah. And I Which feel like bullshit. Well, it is. It is and it isn't. I yeah. I mean, I. I, my first professional gig was doing marketing slash IT, and it was nothing I went to school for. So, like, I was all, I, or, huh, I mean, I was self-taught in a lot of it. So, mm. and it had been eight years of working in retail in between. So, it was like, why? I could, that's a lot of money. I mean, I wouldn't have met you. I wouldn't have met, like, Chris, other people that we now hang out with again, but, like, Outside of those connections, I learned a lot more out of the classroom than in. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel that way too. Even even though I have a science degree in IT, it was specific to. Um, it was a specific curriculum, focused only on Microsoft products, and that doesn't apply in the real world in IT. You no. kind of have to be multi multifaceted. Yeah, you have to have a, a range of skill sets. You have to, especially working with. Um, different platforms because there's a lot of integration out there. A company is always going to go for whatever's affordable as long as it works with other products that they're already using. So it's not a one-stop shop for a lot of places. So the, the more multifaceted you are, the better off you're going to be now, in I, the real world. I want to ask, you were a, I don't know, what, 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 did, what, what did we call a computer monitor for like the or a computer aid for like yeah what do they call them like a lab assistant computer okay. lab assistant or something did, yeah did any of that especially when you're dealing with some of the students that were just not technically savvy did any of that prepare you for the stupidity of being in it in a workplace uh actually it did You'd okay surprised i was surprised um when i look back on it it certainly did because all those same questions that you know users end up with in all a college lab environment that aren't computer savvy are the same questions that come up with adults in a work environment that aren't computer savvy. I lost my file, the printer's out of ink, the the printer's not printing, uh, you know, all the same problems exist in, in both worlds. All right. You got to You got to square it for me. And for everyone listening, it's mostly user error. Yeah. A good chunk of the time, okay. but probably like 80 to 90% of the time. That was, I mean, that was my experience, and I, I ran IT for a very small office, and I was, like, the first line of defense. Like, we had, um, I don't know, an outside agency for, like, if something needed to be recovered and completely rebuilt because I was also slash marketing, right? So I couldn't spend, like, five yeah. hours uh, on, of, in, on any given day doing one IT thing. But I will say, as that first line of defense, my coworkers are panicked, <laughs> <laughs> it's i swear i didn't do anything it was mm -hmm. just like this when i came in yeah, like, it worked I, yesterday yeah my favorite quote <laughs> well yep and today it's not <laughs> sun came up it's a new day new problems man like but i don't know do you go on autopilot when you have those things now like you've been doing it for a long time i actually in some ways yes because you start to learn. I, I start. I went right from college. I stayed. In, I, I worked as the lab assistant, helping students. Then I started working with the, their actual IT department as the IT department help desk technician, um, which dealt more with the faculty and the student, more with the faculty than the students, uh, and helping the the other lab assistants that were underclassmen. From there to an actual tier one help desk job with MetLife um, that just kind of climbed the ladder from there to where I am now. Um, and yeah, after probably <laughs> say like uh, just a couple years working at MetLife, it all becomes autopilot because you start to pick up on it on end user vocabulary. They all have a certain way they like to describe things and what they're saying doesn't actually mean what the problem is, 
but you pick up on these little clues in their speech and you know what their problem is just from having heard it time and time again. Okay. So yeah. in a way you can get autopilot. They're like, they go into this big long rant about their problem and you pick up on these little keywords and I just sit there and listen. And then I'm like, okay, here's the problem. And I don't even tell them what the problem is because they'll argue with you. You know, they'll say they tried this, they tried that. And I don't tell them any of that stuff. I, I just clear cut directions. And I only ask yes or no questions for those uncertainties that they haven't explained that I'm still wondering about to help narrow down the issue. Now, but yeah, most of it's autopilot. Has remote desktop access being more prevalent made it easier for you or harder? Because I feel like I know in my limited experience that there is no replacing being there. Like, No, there's not. Like, It takes a lot longer to talk somebody through an issue over the phone than it does to just sit down at the keyboard and do it for them. Now, so remote it, access is, helps everybody, the, the user and the, the support. Okay. I always found it a little bit like off. The, the My favorite thing to do with remote access was to like just play music on somebody's computer when they weren't expecting it. <laughs> and prank people. <laughs> like just, you know. That's fun for that too. Little Little harmless stuff, you know. Yeah. We, just, we were we were playing a prank on a guy in the office today. Actually, we we plugged a second um, wireless mouse dongle into his docking station, and the guy that sits next to him would periodically tap the other mouse when he's trying to work and screw with him. <laughs> <laughs> They're so small now, you wouldn't yeah. know. No, it took a, it took him probably an hour before he realized what was happening. I like it. I like it. That's. I mean, look. I feel like IT deserves. Um, the ability to mess with people because like, you know, it's, it's harmless most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. You're not trying to erase anybody's computer or anything. So no, well, not in the job, not in the job world because we're held by, you know, like legal agreements and stuff. <laughs> we can't do things yeah. like that. <laughs> Sabotage. It hurts the, com- the reputation of the company. Yada, yeah. yada, yada. Now go to jail, pay fines. That's, that's all good professionally. But, like, I know you. You are, for some of us, like, the go-to IT person within the circle and probably for your family, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yep. do you wish you could just turn it off when you come home? Or does it not matter? It's, I guess it depends on the severity of the issue that that <laughs> person's having. If it's, like, blue screen of death, my computer won't boot. I'm like, oh, God, no, I don't want to do this today. I just dealt with it at work and now I got to do it but like generally no I don't it doesn't usually bother me do you are, are you are you ha- like do you, you don't you don't you're not going to get to a point when you get to that like midlife crisis and go like I don't want to be in IT anymore like you you, you found your spot uh, I mean I don't know that anybody ever does okay. it's rare isn't it really rare that somebody is like completely happy with their career and are super passionate about it every day of their life until they retire i mean that's definitely more and more rare yeah Um, i mean i don't i don't see myself having a midlife crisis and bombing out of it anytime soon i mean Uh, especially at the level i'm at now you never see the midlife crisis coming though i guess i I guess guess that's the point it's kind of like one of those things where it's like i woke up yesterday and i just decided um you know Piano. That's my future, right? <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's just a bad move all around. <laughs> How does this thing work? Uh, well, I mean, you did say you wanted to get back into playing drums. Like, do you still own yeah, a kit? Yeah, but I mean, like, as hobbies. I don't right. see myself, like, joining any bands or, you know what I mean? Nothing like that. Just for my own happiness and enjoyment. I mean, we weren't... When we were playing together... I mean, I never had any illusions that it was anything other than just playing together. Oh, at that time, yeah. You know, we 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 did the best we could with what we had. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I do I do miss it. I mean, I still play on a regular basis some kind of instrument. But I will say, I I I do not want to tour. Uh, right. Yeah. Like like uh. like all those things. Like when we first picked up those instruments, it was like, oh, I'm gonna be. I'm going to go on tour. This is going to be great. And now it's yeah. like, nah, I, I don't want to do that. No. None never, of that sounds I, I appealing. Like, I'm a homebody now. I like to just 
come home and relax. Yeah. I know. I don't want to. That's a lot of stress on people and on their families. And I did play in a band for a short while after college. Um, met some good dudes. We played out uh, probably for about a year. We played at bars and stuff. Okay. It was fun. All right. I enjoyed it. But you wouldn't want to like, hey, let's go across the country. No. <laughs> at that time with them, yeah, probably. But no, nah, not not now. No. Nah, okay. I'm good. <laughs> now, I I feel like we probably should address this. I was at your wedding. Mm-hmm. And then until about two years ago, I don't know if we ever spoke in between. Probably. I don't think so. I, I don't know. We, I just lost touch with a lot of people in that time frame. I think that's common. Yeah. I'm 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 glad we're back together. Like I have to give Chris all the credit in the world because his stream kind of brought us back together. Right. Yeah. And when he started that again and I, and I reached out to him and re, and he you and him had stayed yeah in communication that whole time. I was kind of like in shock. I was like, "Whoa, that's actually really cool." It's so it's but it's so uncommon like there are other people that i try and reach out to on occasion um you know you still have a phone number you try and call somebody on occasion maybe but like Mm -hmm. it's amazing to be the one person when they're like oh do you still talk to so and so yeah all the time Mm -hmm. and everybody's like wait really yeah yeah (laughs) yeah so like on the flip side of that like you you and chris kind of stayed together that whole time and me and john Okay. Have, like been together friendship that that whole time too. Yeah. Which is I guess I don't know. I don't know how that works. You know what I mean? Like some people just you're just like stuck with not in a bad way, but like you're you're uh bonded. Yeah. And then the other ones kind of just go away. It's not that it was a a bad yeah. thing. Like you just kind of drifted away on your own paths for a little while. No, I mean you you we you and I had a a couple of phone calls since then. And it was just like, like we got on the phone. And it was just like nothing. nothing ever happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we, we, we met again back for mm-hmm. Chris's birthday stream. And again, that was it, awesome. It was, just but like, it, it was, it was like, we, it was like, we just saw each other like a couple of days ago. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and it's weird. I mean, I feel like it's one of those things that it happens. Cause like the, we were so surrounded by like what, 15, 20 friends all the time on that oh, campus. Yeah. That there was no way that that entire nucleus was going to stay together. No. But just how everybody fragmented out, like, it's so weird. But, like, then we come back and it's like, I don't, I don't know why I stopped talking to you. Like that. And, and like, here. I don't either. <laughs> here's the thing. I started this by saying I was at your wedding. Nothing bad happened at your wedding, right? Like, it was just like, then no. life happened, right? Or whatever. So, you know, yeah. and it's just kind of like. We got jobs. We get busy. You know, like. It just splits, I guess. But I'm I I like I'm I'm glad now. I feel like it's it's also like very weird too because it's like who else who who else would this work with? Because I don't think it's everybody. Like I no. don't think you could put me back on a phone or in a room with all the people that were in our circle back then, and that I would be completely okay with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think cer- certain people grow at different rates and times, mm-hmm. and y- y- you and I grew in a way where, like, we're, we're still in the same place. Like, we're in a different yeah. place, but you and I are in a similar place now. Like, we're homebodies. Yeah. Like, I'm, yep. I'm not taking any chances now. Yeah, yeah, yep. Like, yep. That's like me too. Let Let me chill. I yep. don't. Nah, I'm. <laughs> but yeah, I see what you mean, though, because like yeah. we. Like I see, obviously Richie's on my my social media. He doesn't. You re, you would reach out to him periodically, but he doesn't respond all the time. We went to see his comedy show down in Bloomsburg, and I mean we only got to meet like face to face with him and and talk back and forth for ten minutes before he had to take off with his crew. <laughs> so I mean like, <laughs> yeah, and he's one I reached out to a couple times over the years because again he's on our social media. I mean I feel like social media is like the ultimate crutch for that. Like. And and I've I've not been on Facebook, which is the big one for like life events and stuff that happen automatically. Where I'm yeah. like, I'm not like once I got off of there, I ceased to be connected. 
even in a tangential way or even mm-hmm. in a superficial way. And it was like, I have no idea what anybody's up to. And right. the few people and- that were still on Twitter at that point weren't sharing the, the life stuff on Twitter. Yeah, it's weird. Those two Twitter's on its own weird kind of communication compared to Facebook. But I know I, I know what you're saying about that whole crutch thing. It's like you see their updates all the time, so you don't really feel the need to have to reach out. Like you already yeah. know what's going on in their life. Yeah, like hey, what's going on? Oh, I just got a new job. Oh, I saw that on Facebook the other day. Like what? Yeah. Why even have the conversation at that point? It, it kind of diminishes some of that, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, but I mean, I mean, I get to learn all this for the first time when I do finally reach out to people because like yeah. I, I don't see it. Um, I also feel like it, it's 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 a good thing and a bad thing. Like I will reach out to people if I can remember on their birthday mm. and give them a text because I don't feel mm. the need to do it publicly. But, yeah, I do that, too. I do that, too. I like to text instead. But I will also get those moments where somebody's like, did you remember? It's so and so's birthday, because I just saw it on Facebook. And I was like, I mean, I I I texted them. Like, does it not count? Like, do you, <laughs> as the rest of the world, need to know that I wish Jason a happy birthday publicly? No, yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't. Exactly. <laughs> I feel the same way. But but we've we've come a long way. We're the generation that started with what ICQ and IRC, and you can go back farther the i yeah i r uh irc yeah i mean that was my um, first one irc was my that was first a lot one. of people. yahoo chat rooms i don't think i was ever in yahoo i think i went irc to icq and then i tried to be the one who like held my nose at aol people and then mm. everybody was just on AOL, so you just couldn't do, it was you couldn't do anything about it it was, like, it was like like being that one holdout for facebook like yeah like well I, I mean at some point you just have to i was a bigger fan of icq too but yeah, AOL had the population. I think that's a thing that you and I have in common as a tech backgrounds. Like there are certain, yep. there are certain programs that just you grab. It was so towards. much better. It, it interfaced with a lot of stuff. It held your messages for you when you you could send out messages to people when they were offline, and they'd get it when they came online. Yeah, like that was one of its best features, and there were plugins for it. You could add all, all kinds of things. There was a plugin that would let you. Um, basically auto blog from your chat window and it would publish it to a, a website. I used that for a, like a, a ticket tracking project in, in college. And I was like, this is pretty dope. You couldn't do that with AOL. No, but yet I know that during that time period, if you wanted to know where anybody was, you checked the, 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 oh, the AOL. Yeah. Like it was yep. just like, yep. Oh, so-and-so's yep. in class. So-and-so sleeping. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so speaking of, Right. Like I and this isn't this is going to sound very egotistical, but like how much of me did you even know? Because of what I was doing on Facebook at one point was all the blog stuff. Like I didn't put anything real up there. I I, I mean, a bit not real, but like I wasn't putting life of events. It was like, hey, I wrote this thing. Hey, I wrote this thing. Hey, I wrote this thing. Like if you look at my Facebook feed at a certain point, that's all it was. I gave up on it. Otherwise, like, Mm -hmm. was that weird? Did you see it? Like, I don't, I guess I I actually didn't think it was weird at all. I was kind of figured, oh, like, you know, you're actually out there doing something that you like that was like kind of in your career path in terms of media writing publicizing and i i would just see the post and even it was never my interest any kind of blogs or or podcasts i never fell into that crowd mainly because i don't i'm not a reader of anything um well you're not a reader of anything but but, we're gonna get to the fact that you can do multiple languages somehow so let's uh well um (laughs) but uh i would see the post and I, i even though i didn't click on him and read anything i thought oh well this is cool he's doing he's doing good he's out there and i I just felt like um what's the word i'm looking for toward you like uh happiness okay like you're doing you're doing good for yourself and i thought that's that's good that's awesome he's following his dream yeah 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 yeah. i mean i didn't know what i mean i didn't know what i wanted to do at that point like i mean i guess you know at the in the beginning it was like i don't this is uh, okay what am i doing (laughs) but you know but you were doing it you were yeah. out there, you were doing it, and I thought that was, I, thought, I found that kind of respectful, so All right. that's what I thought about it. I mean, so I, I, I mentioned it, 
but like you played through Wind Waker in a completely foreign language when it came out because you couldn't wait for the yeah, English no, version. I wasn't waiting when I when I found when I found online that you could you could hack the the GameCube to play Japanese games. I was like, I'm doing this. I'm getting that game early, and I had it imported, and I did it. Now I re- I was part of the crew that would hang out in your room and watch you do this. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> well, it was um I mean it was Twitch before Twitch, I guess. But like at the same That's what time Chris likes to call it, yeah. It was also very exciting because you didn't you it's not like you learned the language to play the game. You were just no. playing the game based on symbols and guesses and having yeah. played the Zelda franchise before. Yeah. And, and I feel like that was part of it. You got like swept up in like what does that mean? I don't I don't I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah, I knew I I I thought the the language barrier might be a problem, but they've the way they design games visually just kind of guide you. Like you don't really even need to be able to read the text. I, I some games, so that type of game, yes. If you're trying to play an in-depth role-playing game, you're probably going to be lost. Yeah. Uh but something like that um, you didn't need to know the language, and it's they they'd even highlight they'd color code things. Obviously, rupees were color coded, and after you start to pick up on those symbols and and the numbers, and you're just like, oh, okay, well this this symbol must mean rupee because I see it all the time. It matches the color of the item I've just got. Yeah, and there's you know there's a a quantity along with it, so you could pick up on tiny little things. But no, nah, I I only got I got stuck in that game twice. Where I feel like maybe the language could have helped, so I ended up hitting a forum, and and those two moments had, I had to look up some help. But other than that, I'd say you could play like ninety seven percent of the game, see, and without that, even knowing the language. And that's where I I I I was kind of in awe because like I wouldn't have even thought to do it. Like I I I would have just waited. I mean, I did. I mean, in the end, I did. I just waited for Wind Waker to come to to English. Yeah, I don't know. I did messed up stuff there. But, well, but <laughs> I was like, I can't wait. I'm not waiting six months. No way in hell. Now, did you play the English? Actually, no. I never <laughs> went back and played the English version. <laughs> I had read that they they trimmed down um, the one point of the game where you get the treasure map and you have to go out to the ocean and find some items before you can go and fight Ganon. Um, in the American version, there were less maps and less islands you had to visit. Okay. And I was like, oh well, I mean. Yeah, I, I kind of already went through it, so like, I mean, would you would would you want to do that again? Uh, I, I haven't played, I haven't played Ocarina remastered. I haven't played, I haven't really played any of the remastered games. So, I kind of just like let that nostalgia stay. I guess there's very few games that I've replayed over. Ghostbusters is one of them. I've played that many times. See, but that's where you and I differ. Like, I play old games. It almost exclusively. <laughs> I, I think I've had a bad taste from it because I, there's some games like old NES games that I thought were amazing. Then I go back and play them now and I'm like, this, it doesn't hold up. And it kind of ruins the nostalgia. So okay. I don't want to ruin the memory for myself. That's fair. That makes sense. But, but I think part of that is that you have continued to play newer games, right? Like I, I got frustrated with, uh, so there are easy examples for me. Right. I got frustrated with Diablo 2 because I thought you were killing me with too many options, which is oh. why I go back <laughs> and I enjoy just the hack and slash elements of just Diablo 1. Right. And, okay. and that's why I didn't move forward. And I didn't need the first person aspect of World of Warcraft. So Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness as a regular old RTS mm-hmm. was something that I still go back to and play. Right. And even Quake as like first person shooters, like you'd think like, I mean, I grew up with Wolfenstein, Duke Nukem and quake that I would have been like all over like call of duty. And the fact that like, we've just gotten bigger and more crazy, but I don't need it more lifelike. Like that's why I played Duke Nukem and quake to begin with. Like these were fantasy and Duke Nukem was like humor. Like I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't need the realism. So all of the newer games I played Duke Nukem forever. I didn't think it was nearly as bad as everybody said it was. But, like, other than that, I, I don't know what anybody was expecting, and it wasn't a game I was clamoring for. I just knew it would never come out, and when it did, I was like, oh, all right. But, like, it, it I haven't adapted. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I went, I started playing Minecraft, but 
I started playing Minecraft eight years after it came out. Like I'm not on the forefront there. And that's probably yeah. the newest game I've picked up. You you've continued to play. Like I have a PlayStation three or four, maybe. <laughs> uh and that was for FIFA, I think. Not even like uh, like a platformer or anything like that. So like I'm not I, I've kind of I just maintain one or two Windows XP PCs so I can go play Quake or Diablo <laughs> really easily with They'll an optical still run drive. In Windows. They'll still run in Windows 10. I Yeah, but g- good luck finding one with an optical drive. Mm. I don't want to have to use a USB optical drive. Like, optical drives are dying out. I need to hold on to, like, the one or two. I have two laptops, so it's technically a, I have a backup. I mean, I guess I could also play LAN if I wanted to. Uh-huh. Um. But I never adapted. I never kept going. Yeah. Um, GameCube was where I stopped for Nintendo. No, I, I got a Wii. But, like, eh. That didn't do so well. I had one, too. It, it seemed promising, and then it wasn't, which is unfortunate. Because it had a lot of good games for it. But the their vision just didn't didn't take off for a lot of people. And now we have the Switch. So I feel like that's what the Wii was supposed to be. And it just... Okay. Get, Nintendo has a habit of getting ahead of themselves in terms of everything development. Like think Virtual Boy. They wanted to do virtual reality before anybody, and now we've got Oculus. So their their foresight is huge, and and I feel like it hurts them sometimes. But well, it, but yeah, I, I never stopped playing anything. All the platforms, all the games, PC, console, you name it. Now, do you have a preference for like console versus PC? Uh, at this point in time, I'm I'm pretty much a strictly PC consoles. The only good thing that consoles have going for them anymore is exclusives, and a lot of the exclusives aren't games that I see like something I need to drop five hundred to seven hundred dollars for. Yeah, I can pretty much play all the AAA titles I want on PC, aside from those handful of exclusives. And and, and now, Sony made a, an interesting side play where they released the newest God of War on PC just recently. So what's the point of buying a, a PlayStation if they're eventually going to port the games to PC? I mean, so that, like that was an exclusive at first. Uh, my original reason for buying a PS3 was to have a Blu-ray player. Right? Like that for me that was the thing. Um and the reason that I was so excited about the PS2 was because it was a DVD player and it played games. Yep, yep, that's why I got the PS2. Similarly, also why I got the Xbox. Not only can I play games, but I'll also be able to use it as a as a movie player, Blu-ray, yeah. my first yeah. Blu-ray. Um, I had the 360 actually. I really liked the 360. There were a ton of games for Xbox 360 and I did actually play a lot of platform games on that. Uh, at the time I didn't have the greatest PC. The only thing I played on PC was World of Warcraft. So, but that that's you know like 14 years ago yeah and now the pc has come such a way where pretty much every game you want to play is on pc so the transition is now well i have a very souped up pc that can play all of those games i don't have a need for a console i have one we have an xbox um primarily for the kid he likes he prefers to play on the console i mean i think that's um i i think if you had asked me 20 years ago i'd say give me a controller um right but you can use a controller on the pc well now you can yeah yeah no i mean that that's when steph started streaming um playing Fortnite. she was using a ps3 controller or ps4 controller because it's just a usb thing it's just a blue a bluetooth thing and Mm -hmm. then i was like well you've been playing minecraft like you can you you have the control you've been playing minecraft you have the controls down to just be a keyboard player Maybe because give or take, it's the same thing. It's W A S and D to move, and it's yep. M look. I mean, yep. does anybody still call it M look anymore? What the heck is a mouse look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, I haven't heard M look. I don't think ever. <laughs> Not even back in the day. <laughs> That's how you unlocked it on Quake. You typed in M look so huh. you could so you could look around because it. I don't know for whatever reason the developers decided ID Software decided that re- using the mouse would just turn your head. But it wouldn't allow you up and down movement hmm. with the mouse unless you engaged M look. That's weird. Um, there were a lot of limitations for those kinds of mice back then too. They weren't very good at tracking. So 
for for a fast paced shooting game. That's fair, but as a as an aside, like I have, you know those plastic drinking cups that we used to get at the water cooler. Yeah, like the little Dixie cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the clear ones. Oh yeah, the clear ones. I have one of them full of nothing but mice trackballs. Nice. Like <laughs> those gray rubbery the ones. The gray rubbery ones. Those things are awesome. And I I still have two mice that actually have the balls. They're USB. They, I kept them because they were actually USB. They weren't um serial port or whatever the the mouse the the round mouse port ones were. Yeah, I didn't know they made those into they, I didn't know they made it to USB at that point. Yeah, I they are. <laughs> well, I like, guess they would have because the lasers weren't they didn't really take off until after USB was out, so yeah. I guess that makes sense. Um but I held on to them. I use them on occasion. Um and I still one of my favorite is I have a I don't know what you'd call it, like a square mouse. It's not like from the top down aerial. It's like a rectangle. And it's a, from from a Mac. It's an old IBM buttons? with oh, three I know which one buttons. You're about. Yeah, I've um, seen those. And I I do have a uh, a serial to USB converter for mouse and keyboard yeah. because I have one of the few remaining IBM like serial keyboards, and it's so much more fun like to type on. Like those old it. OS two clankers with the huge springs in them. Yep. Uh we had those in high school. I love those. It's so. It's the one keyboard in my house that is the most fun to play and or type with Uh um and i have like this slim lined wireless you know low profile ones and all that stuff no there's something about that keyboard i remember it yeah i can still hear it and feel it in my head that's how much we used them in school and i was like that keyboard there's something about it well it's also it's it goes back to some of that nostalgia that you were talking about and yet it was sturdy. Like you could beat yeah. the hell out of it. Yes, you could. You could. You could beat people <laughs> with it, <laughs> and it was a bludgeoning weapon. Yeah, as well as a as a tech device. That's those are the best tech devices. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that should show up more in like Zombie Land. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Forget the the two by four. With, forget the two by four <laughs> with nails in it. Give me the old OS two IBM <laughs> keyboard. You want to see some zombie heads roll? I'll show you. <laughs> and then you could, you know, with the with the cable, you can hang them or tie them up or yes, trip them out. Like, that thing was thirty two. Multi use, yep. multi use. Um. So, what are you running now? Because I've I've now moved right to to basically being exclusively laptop. This yeah, is I now my life. I, I need I need a workstation. I can't do laptop. Laptops are for for business. PC rigs are for fun because uh, you get to a point where it's like, oh, man, I'm running out of storage. All right, just slap in another drive. Oh, I'm a little slow. I need some more memory. I'm, I've got too many programs open. Slap in another stick of RAM. Okay, but in, in fairness, I did slap in. I did double. I, I maxed out the RAM in this. So, like, I did take it from what it was higher up. I couldn't add storage, but I also feel like if you let me just keep adding storage, I would never organize or archive anything. That's me. Like, I'm the guy who every December takes all three monitors worth of icons that have made it to my desktop, puts it in a folder <laughs> labeled Clean Up 2021, oh boy. drags it all in there, and then starts over for 2022. All right. First of all, anybody that's still using icons on their desktop needs to stop. The desktop is dead. There's, there's no, I don't have a single icon on my desktop. Uh, I, I hardly, ha- I, you, I hardly, you hardly see the wallpaper, let alone the icons. I'm aware of that. Yeah. The, not to mention that the desktop itself is nothing more than a folder within the system anyway. It, no. So yeah. if I need a shortcut on the desktop, actually, you know what I do with the desktop is that's where I dump a lot of temporary files, like stupid little like text notes that I don't need to keep or I don't need to back up or worry about. I'll throw them on the desktop, but I access them by going into the folder, the file explorer, and then clicking on desktop and pulling them up that way. I just treat it as another folder. I I, I just treated it well. My um, luckily my my audio editing program exports to my documents folder, but my Photoshop export for some reason it default exports to my desktop. So I just kind of end up with stuff there and then 
I'm in a meeting and I don't feel like using something in the cloud. So I use notepad for notes a lot. Yep. And yep. then I just oh save it and it saves there. And it's just kind of like, eh, I'll take care of it. And then what yep. happens is I take care of it, but I'm, I'm, I'm a horrible person for cleaning that digitally cleaning that up, which is how I end up with every few months at the end of the year, whatever it is, I just drag everything into a folder and I'm like, Oh, I'll get that later. But see you, there's an, that you're giving yourself an extra step there. You don't need to do that. You hide all the icons. You never see them, so you don't have to worry about it. And they're already in that folder that you're talking about. <laughs> see what I mean? I know, I know, but I, I just saved you like three, th- three minutes of work. I, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, I do need to go through and organize that stuff. Like, I, I at the very least, I know I name things properly, which I feel like is a wholly holistic IT thing, because if you don't name things properly. Then when you forget what it is, doing a search is not going to help you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've burned myself like that in the early years, not, not having good organization. Um, but that has changed, and now, yeah, I can't live any other way. You have to, you have to have a good f- folder structure, and you know, like categorize everything in a main folder, put your sub subcategories and folders within that, and then your documents within those. I, it's it's an underrated That's why skill. I, it, it's it is but it, like, it makes your life so much easier when you go to find something you know exactly how to locate it even if you're not really sure what the name of the document was you know where to start looking i mean it is kind of one of the reasons that i'm happy that most of the the last three employers i've had have all been google based because mm-hmm. i like search is search when you're talking yeah. about files but i will tell you at least my last experience with Outlook. Google, when you search in an email, will search in every label and inbox and trash thing ever. Outlook, at its worst, will only let you search whatever you're searching in. So your inbox or a folder, not your inbox and a folder. Uh, well, they, mm, I'm sure, sh- I'm sure it's I changed. I'm running it's, version. It, yeah, it has changed. Yeah. The, Cause I'm running 2019 at work and it, there's an all. Okay. Well, that, that's you can hit all and it'll, it'll dig stuff. Up. I'm glad it's, they it's updated now, that, but it, like Gmail still kicks it out of, you know, kicks its well, ass. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, and I've tried to organize some stuff and like, look, okay. Just don't look at my Google drive. All right. If you hack my stuff, <laughs> don't look in there either that it's slightly organized. But not really. Oh man! Look, I, I, I look. The the two things that need to be organized. My audio files are organized. Um, and I I guess for better or worse, my blog. But then again, like that stuff just goes live to the internet, and then I le- That's how I. That's how I end up with so much crap on my desktop. It's like I. Sh- I downloaded this photo to upload it, and now it's like, eh, all right, well, <laughs> shit. Maybe I'll need it again. I should, I should actually show you my folder structure. You'd be like, okay, maybe. I, can I inspire you to uh, change your uh, your habits? I mean, I think yeah. I can. I I am easily influenced to to find a better way to structure my files. Let's see. All right, so I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at Windows Explorer. Okay. So here's my PC and all its fun drives. Yep. I've named them. So did most you, of so them. So hold on. This is games. So, this so, is mostly also games. All right, but are those I mean for for the for the listening audience, I guess. Are those actual multiple drives or did you do some partitions? No, these are all physical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I told you I need a workstation. Okay. All right, cuz cuz I I guess so for can, could, would these work with partitions space wise if 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 yeah okay yeah you could you could break them up and give them their own labels if you, okay. if you had like a huge drive and you wanted to do it that way me i i i just kind of like using the full volume and then i'll just designate it and i have this i had the space in my in my pc case for all of this so okay. I, anytime i needed more storage i just grab another drive so, slap it in and run so you it. have i'm i'm looking at this right you yeah. have the c drive that's that's fine, but then you have six additional one and two terabyte drives. Is that? Yeah, I, I, well, they were they were cheaper. You know what I mean? Like a terabyte here, a terabyte there, over, <laughs> I, 
I don't know how many years it's been while I've a collected all of these. Era. Look, I, I want I just want to let you know we talked about like PS2 controllers for the yeah. IBM uh-huh. when a terabyte didn't exist yeah, that wasn't in our universe. That people thought about because megabytes was like, well, they were just increasing megabytes. Oh, now this thing can hold like a hundred megabytes. Oh my god, that's so much space. That's the zip drive. You are that's the zip drive market. Yeah, the, the two fifty hundred meg and then the two fifties, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and that was big and yeah, and now terabytes, it's like, oh, because I st- I still have a USB three and a half floppy. <laughs> I don't know why. Because what the heck is even on that? I, like, I have a couple text. One word document. I have a couple text files on there. I don't know that you could put even a single word document on there now with how much Office has changed. No, but I, I, I mean, I, I don't have Office. I haven't had Office in years, so I, I use text files and Google Docs. So anyway, all right. So, so you, you've got individual drives, which it, people can either have multiple drives or they can partition their drives into whatever. And then, yep. then what? Now what? Uh, and then I organize it by function. Okay. Um, Mega Drive. I, I didn't change the name. Uh, that's just pure backup. Okay. Um, external, I believe that one's external. No, this one's external. Uh, this is an internal backup, backup drive. Okay, but then you got games. I have a lot of games, which is why I have a lot of drives. Okay. And are your game saves also in the games folder where they're installed? God, I hope so. <laughs> I, you know, I never really the, the game saves back up to the steam cloud anyway so it's not anything that i've ever really worried about okay all right but i but i i think they default to the user folder in windows so yeah they're probably not on these drives but that's not something i worry about too much okay i don't play a lot of games that use save states i think the the most recent game i've played that has save states is witcher 3 all right so what about like you know pictures movies you know uh, they're all on. Is that is that just in C under documents, no. pictures, and movies? No, C C is the is just primary. It's just the OS drive okay. and like core applications stuff that I use on a daily basis. Discord, like for chatting, communications, that that sort of thing. Um, applications, bigger applications like art stuff, video editing. I don't put them on the C drive. Okay, I want them on their own independent drives separate from the operating system, you get better performance that way. And I, I would presume if your computer ever dies, it's just plug and play into the next PC. Yeah. All your applications are untouched. It's only the OS that crapped out. It's not a big deal. It's a pretty easy to fix. Now, I guess this is the, the question to ask you here. Did you have a, com- like this system that you have now, is it because a computer crapped out on you and you're like, never again? Um, Yes and no. The extra drives are for that because I did have a, a mechanical hard drive die on me that had a lot of my artwork and stuff on it, and it was unrecoverable. Uh, I ran a bunch of different tr- tools trying to get anything off of it, but it wasn't happening. So I bought some fail safes. I don't have to worry about that now. Okay. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, there's nothing, I guess, with the exception of audio that has been recorded and is not published i don't have anything that's not recoverable like i have an archive of all of the raw files of every podcast could i do something with that maybe down the road maybe but like once the podcast is up the podcast is up you know like um it's there it's it's on youtube as well Mm -hmm. like it's in multiple places so like Unless I really needed the audio file, I don't. I don't know. I and and I'm and not being a gamer, the biggest application I have is Adobe Creative Suite three. Yeah, that one would be a time consumer uh, to reinstall and reconfigure to your liking. So that would be something that I would probably, you know, like have a contingency for. Put it on an external. Something like that. Well, yeah. I am. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't run an application from an external because it's not good for performance, but uh, backing up your workspace layouts, okay. the files that you built in it, that, that sort of stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I am still... And maybe the install files. The install files themselves I would have on that backup as well. I mean, I do have the a backup of the install files. I, I am starting the move to solid state drives. That's... That's going to be a 2022 project for me. 
But like, I'm slowly trying to get rid of physical discs that are in my house. Yeah, they're no good. They're, they're. All right. So how about they this? have a life expectancy? That's my problem with them. I mean, they were great when they, but you needed multiples. Yeah. It, it, look at how the server structures used to be. Like they'd have RAID setups with three to five drives, and they all had the same date on it because they fail mechanically, and you still need access to those files. So is there no reason for me to keep? the spindle of blank dvds and cds i have stuff. no dude i threw i threw all <laughs> those away so long ago i grabbed a garbage bag and i'm like i don't even know why these are in the house anymore I trashed them all right so the i mean i i need to find out what's on the other ones but and i i did spend i don't know a couple of years ago i spent some time just moving any data cd i had into a uh an external hard drive i was like i'll look through this later <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's the best thing you can do. Like any, any of the the writable media that you do have, digitize it, throw it in a folder, organize it later, and then just chuck the media because it's. But you're saying the blank on. ones, there's no reason to hold on to. I mean, why would you want to? Do you use CDs in your car still? Um, if the CD player worked, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so no. <laughs> so, so no, and I'm guessing, and this is a wild hunch. That even a used car won't come with physical media anymore. Not not likely. <laughs> you have to spring for that. That's extra, actually. I'm not kidding. I, I walk into the dealer and go package, like, "They have charged you for it." Can, can I can I get a tape deck? <laughs> like, are you out of your damn mind? Because because I, I still have I still have my tape deck to audio out for a CD converter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I remember them. I saw a screenshot of that on Facebook yesterday, in fact. The old anti-skip and the, the cassette. The anti-skip um, was the big... No. It was a crock. No. It didn't work. It just... We no. live in Pennsylvania. There's no anti-skip. No. Not on these roads. No. The, the, the stop signs was the anti-skip. Like, red lights. There's, yeah. The, this is the anti-skip. But yep. even on a highway. Yeah, the littlest bumps. Um. The, and I remember... So this is going to... This is going to make this very specific, but I remember when the new Route 6 got opened. I remember it opening. I don't think I ever really wrote on it. I don't even write on it now. And I can tell you that anti-skip didn't work when that had just opened. <laughs> and that was smooth pavement. <laughs> and that was <laughs> relatively unused at that point. So, yeah, not not a thing. Not a thing. So, all right. Look, um... I need to organize my files better. Well, yeah, I mean, this is just the drives, but then, like, you know, like, say, oh, here's my 3D, and then I have those split up into to assets, characters, practice, projects. I, I think, uh, I 2D, think I just, similar. I, I don't know what it is. Like, I try and be organized in a lot of pieces of my life, but digitally, I, I'm just shit at it. You just got to make the time. That's all I did. I was like, oh, this is a mess. I really, and then, like, one morning, grab my coffee. I said, all right. I'm going to do this. I think I spent about an hour because I had to transfer a lot of large files from drive to drive while I was organizing. So it did take a little longer than I wanted to. But once it was done and you just stick with it going forward, you know, when you save a file, just don't like slap it onto the desktop. Give it a space and I, save yourself in the long run. I think I'm going to have to. I, I think it's going to be part of I think my reorganization will be moving to SSD. Because I need to move stuff off of all these spinning drives anyway. So I feel yeah. like as long as I organize it when I move it. I mean, you could do that. That'll be my the starting point. Um, I also have a problem figuring out, like, the, for me, and I don't know if you have this too, but for me, because digital is so easy, and I guess being in IT, we just always seem to have toys around. Like, oh, yeah. It may not be the best and greatest, but, like, I still have... I have to start getting rid of them, but I'm pretty sure I have like 15 unformatted or reformatted like terabyte drives. I mean, they're all spinning, but like just laying around. I mean, you could still use them, use them for backups or whatever. But like organizing digitally has always been my my worst thing because I always had space. So it was like, yeah, this is unorganized and I ran out of space and maybe there's duplicates of shit on here, but I can just grab another drive. Yeah. Oh, and when I when I was doing video edits, I did I did per game folders, right? So all of the the video okay. clips are all yeah. Well, 
they're a better man than I, man, because I, I just, I, I need, I need to do, I know I need to do this. I know this improves the quality of my life. Yeah, it does. And I mean, it, obviously this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. But you got to start somewhere at some point. Highly recommend it. All right. So here's my, here's my other questions then. Do, do I still need to run a defrag? Uh, you know, I haven't done that at all with an SSD. I don't know if you need to. Okay. Never thought about it. Never looked into it. It's just, it, it's one of those things that I remember from like yeah. back in our college era days of being like, all right, I'm defragging the computer this weekend. Well, that's because of the way that mechanical drives put things onto those little metal plates. Yeah. There's little pits on there and sometimes pieces of the file will get split to different areas of that, like a record, a needle on a record. Yeah. Some might, some, you know, like you're trying to pull up one document, half of it's on the outside of the disc. And the other half of it's on the inside. It's going to take longer for that file to open because the head of the unit's got to move from the outside to the inside, outside to inside to pull all the information before the document pops up on your screen. So the defrag searches for all those missing pits and it moves them to a better physical location on that disk inside the hard drive so that when you go to open it the next time, it's faster because all of its components are in one spot. Gotcha. I don't know. I... (laughs) I should know, but I don't. How SSDs write now? How do you even it know might this? Still be something. It's just because I'm old. Because, well, <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, here's the thing: I am not unfamiliar with what you just said, and I don't know how I know that. Right? Like, I still remember the difference between RAM and ROM. Oh God, yeah, and ROM that's not even I, a thing anymore. I, I, it's not. It's a dinosaur. It's extinct. Yeah. Right? But like. I didn't, go, but I didn't go to school for it either. I just, I just know it. It happened. It was a thing at one point. Well, they, they taught us, at least in my school, they taught us that in, what grade did they start doing computer science? Yeah. I mean, maybe I don't know, somewhere around seventh grade, maybe. And that, that was one of the topics. They, we had to know the difference between that. And because when we did programming, we had to load up. A ROM, like the operating system didn't boot up when the computer did. <laughs> it was separate. So, you know, you had to type a command to get to it. I want to, I want to go back to command prompt. I, 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 uh, I you still, it's still there. I use it all the time. No, I no, believe me, but I want it to be the gateway forever. I want to gatekeep the internet <laughs> with command prompt. With command prompts. <laughs> oh man. Just slow us down by 50 years. <laughs> just 50 huh yeah maybe a little less actually um i i just i yeah i don't know i i i, I feel like for those because you were an early adopter of the internet too like yeah it was a simpler time <laughs> like yeah i can do this show and put it on the internet and you know for free if i wanted to um but i like distribution channels but like and I, I could never have imagined this, like an hour plus conversation, li- like, you know, either live if I wanted to or live mm-hmm. to tape that this is. And it's just like, I don't know. I, th- I think I would be all right if I could command prompt gatekeep the Internet. <laughs> it, it was a simpler time, it, but it, I mean, it wasn't even it, it was a what do you want to call it? It was more of a. um can't think of the word a digital library because it wasn't like no a... it wasn't even that then it, it was it was almost like a toy yeah it didn't really have any purpose it, it was there the people building it had a vision for it but from a consumer perspective we weren't going to see that for many many years so toss it's like oh you got the internet oh okay well i can look up uh, a cooking recipe on this post board somewhere on this public forum okay that's great you want to go outside and ride bikes? Like now it's ingrained. You can't live without it. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that might be one of the reasons I want to gatekeep it is because like I, this might be too highfalutin for me to say really, but I feel like the people that can literally turn the internet off and go away from it for the longest periods of time are you and me, like are the people that live with it all the time. I don't know, man. I don't know if I could turn it off anymore. I'm too hooked. Really? Like I, oh. I, I, I am so happy to like shut down a computer, finish a project, and then just go read a terrestrial book. 
Like I'll watch Netflix and stuff. I know that's internet connected, but just to not be on certain things. Everything I run in my everything I run anymore is internet based. So like I would have to reacclimate to society of of a, a bygone era. Do you even still have CDs? <laughs> Like no. like music. Well, I mean, ones. I have so I have like a box of them up in the attic, musical ones. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's where they are now. They're just in the attic. They're in the attic. Like grandpa's old vinyl. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Maybe someday some some hipster kids of the future will pull them out and say, "Oh, these sound so much better than our quartz crystal based digital <laughs> optical audio devices." You know what I mean? Because that's how they say a vinyl sounds better than CD now. And I'm like, I, I, I'm pretty sure you're just saying that because you're saying that. There's no real science behind that. I mean, they're cool. I like the nostalgia of them too. I like that. I like that crisp sound you get when you first put the needle on the record yeah. before the song starts. And that's pretty much it. Like, I don't think they have superior audio quality. No, but at the same time, we could probably get you a really good wave or mp3 that's just that needle drop oh it could be totally simulated yeah but there, but there's also like there's just there's there's also kind of a, a, a euphoric feeling of, of handling the media and putting yeah. the needle on there not that i don't have one but it'd be cool if i did i i would i would use it put on those old big ass headphones with the quarter inch jack stereo system and just kick on the bed I still I don't have a bed in my in my basement, but I do have a stereo system with a record player. And um, actually, it's kind of a I don't know if you remember the stereo, the quote unquote surround sound stereo system I built in my dorm room with the 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 uh, car audio bank speakers that I bought multiple uh multiples of and it was like all right this is this is front right and front left even though it's a bank right i wired it up but that stereo system is still in my basement kind of also wired similar with a with a record player that and wasn't in moffat though right yeah I don't it was remember that was it yeah, I don't yeah. Remember. well i don't I, remember that i had i had hung the audio uh banks in the ceiling panels uh so you only ever saw the main right and left speakers but the rest of my quote unquote stereo <clears throat> system was up in the uh, ceiling panels. Yeah, I had that. Um, I had the Sony one that <laughs> remember that rem- <laughs> remember the glass shattering when Dan was playing guitar the one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were you there for that? I was. Yeah. I I was like, we just hear, he just like, we hear him playing, all of a sudden it goes quiet, and he's screaming, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like fucking, what the hell happened? There was glass all over the floor. I'm like, what the. He's like, dude, it just exploded. Well, <laughs> like he, we, I was like, oof. We both know how he used to play. It's no, it's no surprise. I, I, I think it was just the temperature at the time because, and probably the vibration from the amp that yeah. caused it to shatter. Because it was shattered into tiny, tiny little like yeah. quarter inch cubes. It's and what that's, it's what you think of when you think about like breakable glass. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And it was just a big old pile of it on the ground. And they weren't jagged cuts either, so it's not like he smashed it with, like, he wasn't paying attention and he bumped into it and broke it into little pieces like a mirror. Yeah. They were, they were, like, perfect little squares, and they were smooth, and I don't think, you, you could pick them up with your hand and not get cut. So that, that was some, like, uh, crazy science that happened there. Yeah, well. And, and that's, I, I've had that, I had that happen one other time in my life to a car window. Wow. The heat from the inside of the car. On a, it was a hot summer day, and I walked out to the car, and the window was gone, and there was just those tiny little square glass pieces all over the inside and outside of the car. It had just exploded. I don't know. Maybe you're a superhero, and you don't know it. Yeah, I did it with my mind. <laughs> So as an addendum to the friendship episodes of 25 through 28, this one is as important, perhaps more so, as Jason and I discussed those friendships that remain, the ones that endure against all odds over the decades are rare. But perhaps even more rare is the fact that Jason and I have a friendship again. It was happenstance that former guest Chris Hughes started his stream and connected Jason and I back together. But It won't be that stream that keeps us together. We've been talking, and while life and circumstances conspire against our getting together and playing music again, 
we still find time to talk, which is something we haven't done on a regular basis since college, really. And as Jason and I discussed, it won't work for everyone you used to know. But if there is someone you want to reach out to, just reach out. The worst that can happen is that you remain acquaintances connected by some social media. Maybe Jason is also correct that I shouldn't gatekeep the internet with command prompt. And he's probably correct that I should get my digital organization going. But most importantly, I'm just glad we can joke around like we used to. But also that we can talk about the things we're going through right now. We met a long time ago, and while we have both changed, it still works. And that's not to be understated or taken for granted, because again, as I said earlier, I don't think this works with just anyone. So reach out to someone. Do it. And perhaps you'll reconnect as if no time has passed. Good luck, and let me know how you fare. Thanks for listening to The Palmer Files, episode 65. As a reminder, all links are available in the show notes, and now for the official business. The Palmer Files releases every two weeks on Tuesdays. If you're still listening, I encourage you to join the discussion. You could tweet me at Agent Palmer, my guest Jason Collins at It's Uriel, that's I-T-S-U-R-I-Y-E-L, and this show at The Palmer Files. Email can be sent to this show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. And remember, your home for all things Agent Palmer is agentpalmer.com. Jason, do you have one final question for me? Yeah, so since we're on the topic of all things tech, there's a huge push out there for coders, software engineers at this point, which I fell away from um, when I got into IT because it was mostly hardware and networking at that point. So I'm in in a different world at this point, but I I used to code and I did enjoy it and I still tinker with it from time to time. Um, But I remember you were making websites and stuff. Did you ever keep up with that? Like, when did you start doing that, and um, are you still doing it? I, I I guess I could say that I taught myself around 2008, like after college. I really taught myself HTML again, but I had started originally with a GeoCities site um, and, like, hard-coding a GeoCities site back in, I don't know, whatever seventh grade was, so 97, 98, something like that. And... Um, when I when I retaught myself after college, um, I was a very like old school like it's one of the reasons I use Notepad for notes because I was just using Notepad to build websites and I was mm-hmm. hard coding them in HTML and then then you learn about the the style sheet like just and, and uh, actually do it like when, CSS is amazing because when you it, CSS is amazing it's magic especially when you start with hard HTML. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And you go like, oh, wait, I don't have to hard code every line. I can give it yeah. a name. This yep. is amazing. Yeah. And then um, I got lazy. So <laughs> so what happens is I, I started my business in 2008. And at that point, I was hard coding any website that I was getting in. And then if you flash forward to about 2010 or 11, when I get my first real professional marketing job, we it, it would the place I was working had a WordPress website, and so I got familiar with WordPress. Now the thing about WordPress, which still remains true to this day, is you can use HTML. Uh, it still allows you that source input, but like I got lazy, and when I learned how WordPress worked, I got a little bit into PHP, like enough to be dangerous and really screw stuff up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but I also got away from hard coding. So I still have that knowledge base, but I don't scratch it at all. Um, I I mean, I'd like to go back, but like I'm a guy who now I complain when I absolutely think that every step forward in like 
the WYSIWYG visual editors is a step further away from what it should be. And it just adds more bloat and shit like that to the code. Oh, yeah. Oh, it certainly does. Um, People don't optimize code at all. I just... Well, and, you know, in oh, fair... We, they we, do in some instances. In, but. Yeah, but for the most part, they don't need to because, like, oh, it, it, you know, the speed will be faster in a year. So what did... It's not going to matter. They can read it yeah. faster. and Yeah. Um, yeah. So back, 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 way back when, um, yeah. in those old IBM days, yeah, um, you were limited on RAM. And if you wanted a program to run, you could fill all the RAM and do no more with your, your code. You had to be very specific in your structure and all of your code. So to, to that end. In that limitation. To that end. I wish I could tell you what language I used. I think it was just basic. But I remember, yeah. outside of HTML and CSS, I remember hard coding, hard coding. Like, this is the geekiest thing I will ever probably say on this podcast. <laughs> I remember coding in basic cheat codes for geometry in math class on my graphic calculator because like we were allowed <laughs> to use the calculator yeah. but we weren't allowed to use notes so the night before i would be in basic programming the um like variations of the theme so i could input x y and z or whatever i needed to wherever i needed to in a program and just hit enter and it would give me everything i needed yeah which is not how you cheat, by the way. Like, <laughs> in, in, you don't spend six hours coding on a graphic calculator to cheat. That's... I mean, you could have just studied. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I could have. But that's, I wish, I, and I think it was just basic on those calculators for OS, but like. That's the, that's the mindset of an engineer, actually, is to, to uh, expound a problem and, and do a whole lot of difficult work up front. But it does work out in the long run for a lot of things. It ends up making things much more easier and efficient. Yeah. But the initial steps are always like. Well, I can also tell you that much. I should have never waited until the night before to code. Because oh, I no. remember because I remember getting things like getting like just F's because my code was bad. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean, like just, you're <laughs> off by something. Right. And it's just like, oh, sh oh well, <laughs> I don't uh, What's the, what's the old phrase? The computer's only as smart as the person that programs it. hundred percent right. <laughs> and, if, and if you are a, I don't know, what, 15-year-old high school freshman, that's yep. not very smart. And then your computer's a 15-year-old <laughs> high school freshman, too. 